Our CS2026 coverage is made possible by Thermaltake, Asus, XBG, Gigabyte, Lian Li, MSI, Bitspower, Inwin, Be Quiet, and Alpha Cool. Welcome back, guys. I'm Stuart from GGF, and we are here at the MSI booth at CS2026. Now, of course, the hottest product coming out of MSI is their 5090 Lightning card. Now, we're going to cover the exploded GPU that's broken up behind me. We're going to look at the history of the MSI Lightning series. This is the unboxing experience. So this is how it arrives. It does close up. I just didn't want to close it all the way just now. Opens up like this. And this is how you are greeted with the card, just like this. One thing I do want to mention before I forget, it does come with a riser cable. Gen 5 riser cable is included because I'll talk about that in a second. Moving down a little bit, the card is limited to 1,300 units. I made a bit of a joke to the guys that they got so many cards here. Seems like half of those units are allocated just for this booth, but they said they were, a lot of them are dummy units. So this is the full breakdown of the card. It is an all-in-one cooled card. Now, I wanted to bring that up to the guys at MSI. What was their thought process of doing an all-in-one cooled card or a card that is designed for a custom loot? Well, obviously, they wanted to make it available for more end users because having a blocked card for a custom loop is going to be a little bit harder for a lot of consumers. So this is the breakdown here, the radiator here. I won't get into too much technical information. I'll throw up the spec cards of it. 360 radiator here, MSI fans. This is the top unit. So this is the part you see on the card. This is a screen. I'm sure there is a uh, measurement somewhere on how big the screen is. There is the card in a PC, which we'll have a look at in a second. You can throw all your stats, everything on it for the card. This is the cold plate here with the pump. They had to revise this because they made the cold plate even thicker than originally. This thing is heavy. So when I mentioned about a custom block before, this is basically a custom block. You've got all this copper, looks super nice, and the cooling on this is probably really good. So it's kind of a hybrid. It's like a custom water block in an all-in-one cooler form. Then we have the card itself. Of course, I get some close-ups, and that just looks really insane. 40 phase power delivery. I'm not sure what some of the other brands use, but you can see it's all up the top here with the chokes, the VRMs, all on the sort of butt end of the card. And then even along the top, I don't think I've seen a card with that much power delivery before. MSI released their first lightning card all the way back in 2009. And here's a bit of a timeline. So we can go and see how the cards have changed, the color options and the theming. I do apologize if it's a bit noisy in here. These booths do get super super busy. So 2009 was the 260 GTX Lightning. Then they had a 275 GTX Lightning. So they started off with silver. So silver seemed to be the base color option they had. Then they went to the Twin Forza 2 Lightning 2009 as well. So weird they had two so close together. That was silver. And then we go to 2010. So we go this way, uh, anti-clockwise. And they went with red. Interesting, now some of you guys who aren't familiar with the Lightning series will get a good idea on how they transition through their color, uh, color ranges throughout their timeline. Now, as we walk around this way, might be hard to see because there's not much room in this little pathway. They should have probably put this out. I would have put this out right in the middle somewhere. So we had the uh, 580 GTX Lightning, that's Extreme Edition. Now this one was blue. So they went straight from red, then they went to the blue. Not sure about your thoughts on this one. You've got to remember, this is 2011 tech. Then they went to the uh, 680 GTX Lightning 2012. So it seems to be they had it going every single year. This is when it moved on to its more famous yellow, this one over here. Then in 2013, they went to the uh, 780 Lightning. I actually think I prefer the 680. Looks a little bit more, I don't know, gamey aggressive than the one in the 2013 for the 780. Now moving around a little bit further. I actually didn't know Lightning had so many, or MSI had so many cards in the Lightning range. Now we move on to some more higher end cards. GTX 980 Ti, Lightning 2015 up here. Now we start getting much, much bigger. Then we move down this way, anti-clockwise to the 1080 Ti, Lightning Z, so they've added a Z on the end of it. 2017, so they did skip two years. So now we start going from one year to two years. 2017, now they've gone back to silver and black. Interesting, they sort of dropped the yellow, went to this design, and then two years later, 2019, 2080 Ti Lightning Z, and this was their last one until now. So 2019 was at 2026, so seven 
years. And I actually think I do like this one, I would say, either the most or the second most compared to the current one that's out. But I do like the gold theming on this one. Then we walk around this way. And of course, the final side is going to be for the RTX 5090 Lightning Z for 2026. And they're going for much, much. You can see the uh, design language from the previous years. And then you go, boom, straight to this one. Very clean. The aesthetic is completely different. So you can see how much has changed in the six or seven years. I say six years because they probably spent a good part of last year designing it and coming up with this overall theme. So before I mentioned the GPU comes with the PCIe riser cable, that's because you're definitely gonna to wanna to vertically mount this GPU because it comes with this gorgeous screen that covers the whole area of the card. Now for running the stats you can see on here, this is not connecting to MSI Center. None of that, it runs via a web link. So it's all done via a web URL. You can configure it, you've got a dashboard. I'll get some shots of it running on the monitor so you don't need any third party software. And apparently they said it connects via Wi-Fi to the actual system. So no extra cables, nothing like that. And then I can see on the top, the limited edition run number. Obviously I think that's important on such a small run. Having that limited run number is kind of unique and it makes it that little bit more niche for the end user. And this is number three of 1300. Some other gear in this system. This just looks absolutely insane, this build. This is running the MSI Meg X870E Godlike Max. MSI just dropped this, I think a few weeks ago, right before CS. Looks super clean and it just fills up this case nicely. And you might be wondering, hey, what is this case? This is the MSI uh, Meg Maestro, so this is in 900R. They had a previous Maestro, but it looked nothing like this. They had this at CES uh, last year, but they've done a few design changes, and you can just see it just blends in with the Meg lineup. So what MSI are doing, they have a complete lineup now with their MEG lineup. They got all the Meg lineup, they got the GPUs, they got the motherboard, and now they have the chassis, and they also have uh, all-in-one coolers as well. More on the Maestro 900, so this is nearly ready, this chassis. We can just see how much room there is inside. It does come with the pre-installed three 160 millimeter fans down the bottom. They are reverse flow, which is good. Kudos to MSI for doing that. No ugly back of the fan. They're gonna blow straight up. This one beside me is a complete one. They also are offering a screen attachment. I think that's something like 16 inches. They've actually got two, one on each side because this case is a very symmetrical case. I think whatever you want to do in this, I think if I was to do a build, I would want to keep it very symmetrical. You've got 360 fan support on this side, uh, 360 fan support on this side, although you can't really see it, it's got some covers. You have the 3160s down the bottom and then the top looks like another, it's hard to see, it's way up there. Uh, another 3160 fan support. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put the mic down and show you the different uh, motherboard layout options you can do in this case. So I just took that out, no worries at all. Of course, you are going to screw it back down. There's little screws in there, but I have just taken this from the normal ATX layout to a complete inverted layout. So your GPU would be at the top, your motherboard would be upside down. Now your IO is going to be out this side. And there's a bit of a cover on this case to help redirect your IO. Of course, it's not going to be for everyone. Plugging in your IO is going to be a little bit tricky. So if you're often moving your PC around and all that, it might not be uh, best for you. Some other things you can do with this layout, it's not just those two options. You can actually do it four ways. So you can do two more. So I changed it from the normal layout to upside down. So you can have your motherboard sitting down uh, horizontally. So your IO is shooting straight up or you can have it shooting straight down. And you can see on this card here, it's got four directional motherboard tray layout. Apart from that, I think that's it. I would really like to get one of these for review. Like if I stand beside it, like I'm used to working with things like L11. Uh, we looked at some of the Lian Lee cases. If I stand here, it's so much larger than me. I really hope I can get its perspective, its size on film for you guys. Moving over to some power supplies now. MSI have a few here, but the special feature they're calling is GPU Safeguard Plus. Now, yes, they're calling it AI. That's in the model name. They have an AI 1600 TS, and then they also have an AI 1300 TS. Now, the difference between the titaniums and the platinum, there's a few things here. So I'll get the physical differences. The titaniums will have dual, 12 volt high power. The platinum will only have one. Now, I'm gonna go back to the Safeguard Plus. I think for AI implementation, this is pretty good. 
for you guys, a lot of people get angry when they hear AI. Just pretend I didn't say AI and just think about this implementation. So what MSI are trying to do, they're trying to safeguard the 12 volt high power connector, the power delivery, and I've got a good demonstration to show you how this works. Now we know some GPUs monitor uh, per pin from the GPU side. This is monitoring it from the PSU side so we can see the connector one, the connector two. Now for the titanium model, you will have the USB port which will run to your system. You can then get this interface through MSI Center. On the non-titanium model, so the platinum, you don't get this software. That's the only difference and of course the titanium spec but both of them will have a built-in buzzer. So it is always monitoring. It's just that the titanium has this nice interface. So they're always monitoring. If it gets out of whack, out of skew, I'll demonstrate that in a sec, the PSU will start buzzing. There's nothing you can do about that. You will have three minutes and then the system will shut down. So you might be thinking, well, I got stuff to do, blah, blah, blah. But it's shutting it down because there's something wrong. It's gonna be for your benefit because you don't wanna damage anything else. So what I can do now is I can just randomly this isn't normal. This is just set up to demonstrate this. They've actually split some of the per wires with switches on and I have now turned off uh, wire two and I've turned off wire one on the other one. So we're obviously throwing this out of whack and I think it takes a couple of seconds, 10, 15 seconds for this to come up and we can see what it's going to do. Okay, here we go. I might move this microphone so you can hear it. So it's not, it's not overly loud. I don't think it would matter because it's probably pretty important. We can see now that these two have dropped. Now, for this short time, the other uh, wires are picking up the extra to cater for that, but we will have three minutes. You also get a notification and it will shut down. So I do want to clarify again on, on the titanium models, you do get this nice software. You can have it running in the system tray on the platinum models. It is just built into the PSG by default and you will get the buzzer and then you have three minutes and then it will shut down. So let me know what you think about this feature, something that you're gonna benefit from, something that you like, or do you think it's not needed to me? I think it's good having something like this is welcome because we all know all the issues that are evolved around that 12 volt high power connector. So this here is the MPG 341 CQR QD OLED monitor. It's a 34 inch, it's a fifth gen QD OLED monitor. Now, we've seen a few from other brands throughout this CES a lot of these specs are the same because it is using a Samsung 5th Gen QD OLED panel. You may have heard people talking about the RGB Stripe, new sub-pixel tech. We've covered this at some other suites as well. It uses a different technology instead of the traditional normal sub-pixel where it's in a triangle. It goes like the green, the red, the blue in a triangle formation. This one is in a stripe, red, green, blue in a line. And they've got a good sort of a layout here and a good description on how we can see this. The main idea about it, I don't want to go over everything because the panel is a panel, it's going to be the same on all the companies, they're just calling things differently for their special branding. Obviously, it's going to have better clarity for your image and there's a good example with the RGB stripe and the original because we all know the QD OLED does have that bit of text fringing, it's either like a greenish colour or a purple, that's going to make it clearer and then what MSI are calling the film on this one, because this fifth gen has a different film, a newer film, they're calling it dark armor film, 40% deeper blacks, and then it's 2.5 by scratch resistance. So over time, if you're always wiping your monitor, eventually you're probably gonna get light scratches. This is to uh, prevent that, and it's harder as well. Just quickly on this one here, this is the same panel as the one we just covered, that fifth gen QD OLED. They're calling it the Meg X. It has pretty much all the same features as what we just saw. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you can see it's got this RGB light bar on the front. Of course, you can sync this to MSI Center, set that up to what you want, but it also does some other features as well. It does health monitoring in games. So you're playing Overwatch, your health is being depleted. This bar will be interactive with the game and it can do other things as well. I'll make sure I get some shots on this video because it shows you that better because obviously me to demonstrate that in the game, it's not set up. now. This is a bit of a pay to win monitor. It's got flashbang detection in games where we've got an example here. Well, this way is that you get flashbang. This is with this AI goggle on. You can pretty much see through the flashbang. Now they've been telling us here they can only talk about this for single player games because you have a huge advantage in multiplayer if you can basically 
see through things like flashbangs because the AI is detecting the different brightness on the screen when you are running a game. So that probably will work for smoke grenades, things like that. It'll be interesting to see how that works with things like Battlefield and so on. And I'll get a shot of the spec hub, but I don't want to go over everything else because it does utilize all the same features as the one that we just covered. I think that's it at the MSI suite at CS 2026. Now, I just wanted to spin this case around because I saw someone taking a photo. I did not know that it looked like this on the back. This looks really cool, really aggressive, plenty ventilation on the back there. Let me know what your thoughts on this case. I'm really keen to get onto review do a custom loop build on this one because it is definitely like nothing we've seen before. And of course, it's going to have to be a full uh, meg lineup from MSI. Get that gold theming going throughout some gold coolant. Also, those PSUs, let me know what you think about that AI feature. I think that's actually some AI doing some good in those units. And then we looked at the monitors and of course, that crazy lightning GPU. But like always, I want to thank MSI for supporting my CS 2026 coverage. I want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.